Hello. In previous video, we saw what is Laplace equation and what is Poisson's equation. So to find the potential at the boundary, so we will find the we will obtain the potential using the solution of the Laplace equation of Poisson's equation. The Poisson's equation can be used when there is a the volume charge density exists within the media. So if the volume charge density is zero, then we have to use Laplace equation. That is del square v which is equal to 0, that is called Laplace equation and del square v which is equal to minus rho v by epsilon is called as Poisson's equation. So using this equation we can obtain the, what is the potential at the boundary condition. So next we will see what is uniqueness theorem. So as you, as this name says, thus we can obtain the Laplace and Poisson's equation, solution of the Laplace and Poisson's equation using different method, algebraic method or geometrical method or any other method. So the solution obtained from this method, these methods, the all the solutions are unique or it will have different solutions. So answer for this is obtained from uniqueness theorem. So the whatever the method we use to obtain a solution for Laplace or Poisson's equation, so solution is unique or not, which is which is dealt by this uniqueness theorem. So the uniqueness theorem is basically derived based on the contradiction method used in mathematics. So we will assume in contradiction method we will assume something and we will we will try to prove that the that assumption is true. So that is called contradiction method. So now so I am considering a case that the Laplace equation that is del square v which is equal to 0 has two solutions. One solution which is equal to v1. The one is one solution is v1 and other solution is v2. Now if the solutions of, of Laplace equation is v1 and v2 then this solution has to satisfy Laplace equation. So we can write del square v1 which is equal to 0 and del square v2 which is equal to v2 which is equal to 0. So the whatever solution obtained from Laplace equation, it has to satisfy the Laplace equation. So we can write del square v1 which is equal to 0 and del square v2 which is equal to 0. Now if I consider a boundary, the between two dielectric medium, then the at boundary, the it at the boundary, the always surface is an equipotential surface. The difference between the potential difference between both the terminals is equal to 0. So I am taking the potential difference at the boundary as Vd, then I can write Vd is equal to V2 minus V1. The potential difference between the point 2 and point 1 is V2 minus V1, which is taken as Vd, the where in the boundary. So in the boundary, it is a equipotential surface. So I will take Vd is equal to V2 minus V1. Now, if I consider the Laplace equation in terms of Vd, I can write del square vd which is equal to 0. So I can write that equation as del square v2 minus v1 which is equal to 0 because vd is equal to v2 minus v1. So del square v2 minus v1 which is equal to 0. Now I can simplify this and I can write del square v2 minus del square v1 which is equal to 0. So I will take the I will keep this thing as it is. Now I will take divergence theorem. We know that divergence theorem so for using divergence theorem, we can write the volume integral in terms of surface integral. Means if I have a vector b, so then I can write volume integral of del dot b into dv, which is equal to surface integral of b dot ds. Now here I will do some modification and I will write the vector b as vd into del vd. I will assume vector b which is equal to vd into del vd. So which is a vector. Means vd is a scalar and del vd is a vector so scalar into a vector it is a vector so vd into del vd which is equal to b and then i can write this equation as so del dot vd into del vd into dv which is equal to surface integral of vd into del vd dot ds so we know that del dot vd into del vd we can use some vector identity so which is known as 
del dot v vector a which is equal to v into del dot a plus a vector a dot del v. So we have used this identity in energy density derivation. Same identity we can use here. So if you want to see the proof, this is a proof of vector identity here. So del dot v a, so a dot del v plus v into del dot a. So I will assume a in Cartesian coordinate, a x into a x cap plus a y into a y cap plus a z into a z cap and del as dou by dou x, you know, del as dou by dou x into a x cap plus dou by dou y into a y cap plus dou by dou z into a z cap. So if you take dot product and if you compare with LHS and RHS, you will get the same answer. So this is a proof of identity, this is not required for derivation. So we have to use this, the vector identity here. Now, so using the vector identity here, so I can write this equation as here, substituting A as del Vd and V as Vd. Now I can write, so del dot Vd into del Vd, so same, Vd into del dot del Vd, so which is equal to this one, and del Vd dot del Vd. So I can write this equation as, so here del dot del can be written as del square as we saw in the Laplace derivation del dot del can be written as del square and we can substitute as del dot vd into del vd which is equal to vd into del square vd plus del vd into del vd. But we know that the in a equipotential surface the potential difference is zero. So as we know that the equipotential surface potential difference is zero. So we can take Vd is equal to 0, then this equation will become so del into Vd into del Vd minus del Vd dot del Vd. So del dot Vd into del Vd, which is equal to del Vd dot del Vd. So substituting this in equation, substituting this e equation in, in this equation, we will get So we know that the Vd into del Vd is B. So we can write del dot B, which is equal to del Vd into del Vd. So substituting in the divergence equation, we will get. So volume integral of del Vd dot del Vd, which is into dV, which is equal to surface integral of Vd into, because B is Vd into del Vd. So substituting that, so Vd into del Vd dot ds. But we know that for equipotential surface, Vd is equal to 0. So we can write volume integral of del Vd dot del Vd into dV which is equal to 0. So this del Vd is a vector, again del Vd is a vector, the dot product between two vectors will give me the scalar vector which is the which is equal to the square of the magnitude. So I can write the volume integral of magnitude square of magnitude of del Vd square into dV which is equal to 0 because the del Vd dot del Vd is a the resultant of this will be the scalar which is equal to the the square of the magnitude of this vector. So it is the magnitude of del Vd square into dV which is equal to 0. So I can write this as the magnitude of, so volume integral can't be 0. So this del Vd, magnitude of del Vd square should be 0. So I can write, so del Vd is equal to 0. So if the del magnitude of del Vd square if it is 0 then del Vd also 0. So what do you mean by del the Vd is Vd is V2 minus V1. So if the del Vd is 0 then the V2 minus V1 it should be equal to constant and it should be equal to 0. So when V2 minus V1 is equal to 0 which means V2 is equal to V1. When V2 minus V1 is equal to 0 which means V2 equal to V1. So we can say that for a, the, whatever the method we use to obtain the solution for Laplace equation, the solution obtained for the boundary, solution obtained for a boundary condition, given boundary condition, will be same for given boundary condition. And we can say the if you use any method to obtain the solution, whatever the solution obtained will be unique for particular boundary condition. So we can say the unique theorem states that if the Laplace equation satisfy then the 
then that solution is unique by whatever method it is obtained. For a particular boundary, if the Laplace equation satisfies the boundary condition, then that solution is unique by whatever method it is obtained. So this is the uniqueness theorem. So this uniqueness theorem is obtained by the proof method called contradiction method. So here we will first assume that the, the boundary is equipotential surface. Then we will take Vd is equal to V2 minus V1. Then we will use divergence theorem and then we will substitute vector identity and then we will obtain a solution as V2 equal to V1 which means the for a given boundary condition if the Laplace equation satisfies a particular boundary condition then the solution of the that Laplace equation whatever the method you use to obtain the solution the obtained solution will be unique and it will be equal to each other. So next we will see or the what is the method how we can solve Laplace equation? What are the different steps to obtain the solution for Laplace equation? So first we will obtain the we will solve the Laplace equation by integration method. And so while in uh, while doing integration, we will assume a integration constant. So we will take that constant as C1. So uh, then so once you obtain the solution in an integration form, then we will apply the given boundary condition and we will obtain the what is the integral constant. So we will the substitute the boundary condition and we will obtain what is the integral constant. After obtaining integral constant, we will obtain E. So once you obtain integral constant that is equal to V, what is the solution potential. So once you obtain the potential, so we can find the electric field intensity by using the equation for equation which is equal to E is equal to minus del V that is potential gradient equation. So using that of equation we can obtain electric field intensity. So once you obtain electric field in intensity you can obtain the electric flux density if it is a homogeneous medium then I can write D is equal to epsilon naught into E. So D is equal to epsilon naught into E which is a relation between D and E. So using this you can obtain flux density. Once you obtain a flux density so if the flux density is normal to surface then I can equate to surface charge density. So I can write D is equal to rho s. So once the rho s is obtained I can obtain what is the total charge enclosed the, in the surface. So which is given Q is equal to surface integral of rho s into ds. So once you obtain the charge so we already know the what is the potential. So using the relation between the capacitance, charge and potential we can obtain what is the value of capacitance of the given dielectric medium. So this is how you will apply the Laplace equation to find the what is the capacitance of given dielectric medium. So first you will solve equation by integration method and we will assume suitable constant C, C1. Then what, after getting the equation in terms of some constant then we will substitute what is the boundary conditions. So by substituting boundary condition we will obtain integral constant. Once you obtain integral constant that is equal to the what is the equation for potential. So from the equation for potential we will obtain the electric field intensity using the gradient potential gradient equation. So once you obtain electric field intensity you will, you will find what is the electric flux density using the relation between D and D. So after obtaining D, the D that is electric flux density. We will, if the uh, the flux density is normal component E is equal to the surface charge density, then we can obtain the charge. So once you obtain the charge and potential, you can obtain the capacitance. So this is how you use the Laplace equation to find the capacitance of V1 system. So in next videos, we will solve problems on Poisson's equation, Laplace equations and the, and we will use Laplace equation to find what is the potential and what is electric field intensity and the capacitance of different systems. Thank you.